Hey everybody, it's Andrew Brown and welcome to the Terraform Beginner Bootcamp. And uh, I'm joined here with my other co-organizers and a very special video. I mean, all the videos are special, but this one in particular, because uh, we want to talk about uh, cloud engineer professional expectations. Um, and I, I'm sure that really sounds fun for everybody, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, some slides and I got some bullet points here and we're going to have a conversation around this stuff so that uh, you folks can be successful both uh, on the job and also within this bootcamp, um, if that sounds great. But what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, which will just take just a moment. Hi, Shala. How are you doing today? <laughs> Hello. I'm great. I just found a, um, I don't know about you, but I haven't updated Zelda Tears of the Kingdom since I bought it. So I have all the hacks <gasps> available. And so I'm jealous. Duplicating stuff. So. Oh my gosh. Um, I know <laughs> that uh, uh, Starfield's out, and that's a very popular game, but here in Canada, it, it's at least $100. And so um, I'm playing five dollar games from the early 2000s uh because that's all i can afford but uh, i'm currently I'm still on Baldur's them. gate three so <laughs> which i hear is also really good oh it's fantastic so but all uh, right I'm, hmm? well i'm just <laughs> saying I'm, I'm just saying i'm hoping that i see uh some of these uh some of your favorite games in the terror towns uh, uh gamers town because that'd be interesting to learn about those games oh I, I have so many comments to make in the gamers and and the food I, there's there's going to be a ton of sections yep. i'm going to be contributing to um so uh yeah here i have uh our slides and i'm just going to go and pull up uh, i think six points is what we agreed uh here that we want to share with you here today uh and they're not gonna make sense just right away but we'll dig into each one okay so the first one is embrace feedback the second one is practice thoughtfulness. The third is to uphold universal conduct. The fourth is to prioritize self-reliance. The fifth is to show your effort. And the sixth is to avoid the silo, embrace the collective. And that last one might be a Star Trek reference. I don't know. And, um, and to be clear, these are the expectations that we are going to have of the students because these are the things that cloud engineer professionals do in their work. Like in their in their workspace, they these are the things that they do, and these are the kinds of um, behaviors that we are going to expect from the students. Yeah, and I, I think everyone here has worked uh, as a cloud engineer in in uh, different degrees of capacity. So I think we can validate that these uh, to be true. Yes. Um, and so we're going to move on to the first one, which is embrace feedback. So uh, see feedback as a guide to growth, leading to excellence in cloud engineer engineering handle feedback with grace so uh when we're talking about feedback uh we're talking about in i guess an example of uh this boot camp you might be receiving feedback from myself from shala from chris from other um uh, members and it's very important to understand that feedback is here to help you it's here to uh help you grow uh and that emphasis there with handle feedback with grace is um and maybe this is me just talking about the first boot camp, but I noticed that a lot of folks took feedback really to heart. And for some of them, it stung. Uh, it might have made them a little bit emotional. But you know, I just want folks to understand that you know, when you're working uh, on the job, uh, it's expected of you to handle feedback, embrace feedback gracefully. Um, uh, but Shal or Chris, do you have any kind of examples or thoughts on on this point? There are going to be a number of ways to do things. Um, and when you're working with other people, people are going to have different designs. They're going to have different architectural thought patterns. They're going to have come from a different school of thought to begin with. It's okay to be wrong. Um, what the, the cloud engineers that I see having a really hard time are the ones that can't be wrong. Uh, if their way is the right way and they can never be wrong, then you're, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. And for me, I can speak real life, like my real life right now. Um, and people may have heard me say this recently, but I'm in the current state since I came from network engineering into cloud uh, with zero cloud experience, all that kind of stuff. I am showing up to work still every day as the dumbest person in the room. And so I definitely get feedback a lot. Uh, 
And it's all a matter of what you do with that feedback, you know, like I, me personally, I take the feedback I get and I use that to just get better at what I'm doing versus getting too in my feelings, you know, mm. early career, there were times where I would sit there like early, early career, I'm talking about like 10 years ago in IT, where I might go cry in the corner for a little bit, <laughs> but then, yeah. you know, I get it together and I take whatever's making me feel bad. And I go like, say like now, maybe there's something where I felt like I could have got something done in like five minutes, but you know, I was lacking the skill set to do it. So I felt bad. So I take that bad feeling and I go, okay, fine. Let me go learn how to work with SQL databases. And now it's like, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, just to validate uh, one of the points there um, is that uh, feedback doesn't necessarily that you're doing something wrong. It could just mean that that the team wants to do things in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, just think about the feedback and, and you know, take it gracefully, if that makes sense. Um, so we'll move on to number two, which is practice thoughtfulness, um, or we could even say consideration. So before requesting assistance, consider it. Uh, consider uh, the necessity and impact. I think I might've wrote that wrong, but uh, factor in the time and effort on those you are requesting assistance from. Ask yourself, is this a reasonable request? Um, and so, you know, to talk about prior boot camps and, and, and students or even in the thing is that, you know, make sure whenever you're asking something that you know, it, it's uh, reasonable. If someone says, hey, I'm gonna get to, to this today, and and then your response is 10 minutes later did you do it was that reasonable right you have to think think about what's going on and imagine if you're doing that task um and whether that is reasonable if that makes sense uh chris or shall we? there's a uh, there's a phrase an, a, an old acronym that we've used um, when it comes to before you request assistance before you consider before you do anything outside of your own thought process is called RTFM. And that's an acronym and that stands for read the fine manual. If you, you have to do some digging on your own. Um, the last thing that your teammates, the last thing that your, your compatriots and, and the folks on your team are gonna wanna do is answer the same question that, that could have been answered with a five second Google search or, or re referencing the documentation or something like that this this kind of work is thought work you have to you have to you have to read the documentation you have to make sure that you get stuck bef before you actually like go out and nope nobody wants to do your work for you um that's that's a very and and the person that's asking they don't want to do it for the next person so it behooves you and your profession and your employment to rtfm uh, take good notes. This one's like a professional tip as well as you can use it for the boot camp. but make sure that you take notes. Try not to re-ask the same question again. Um, this will help you professionally because when you take good notes and your teammates recognize that, they're more willing to help you because they see that you're putting forth effort to actually learn the thing that you asked. Um, exactly. Also, right now, again, I'll keep I'll keep sharing this so that way, you know, hopefully I can help others. But as someone new in cloud, you know, there's things like chat GPT and Google Bard out these days. I'll go ask my dumb questions to them first before I go to my teammates and make sure that I'm legitimately stuck and can't get around the thing. Or even if I still need to ask them questions, at least I'm not starting from ground zero. I have a little bit of knowledge from where I did research on my own and then I go to a teammate. So it's like, you know, I know a little bit of what I'm talking about and what I'm asking. So my thing is to do research on my own so I'm not having someone, you know, spoon feed me the answer because that's not what I want anyway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's nothing wrong with asking a question that you might be considered dumb as long as you've exhausted your own efforts and you're saying, OK, I really can't find this. So I'm now going to appeal, uh, appeal this question here uh, and show that proof. Um, and I think we talk about that uh, in another point here. Um, and, uh, you know, just understand that, you know, think of the capacity of your team and, and the expectations of what they can do. So, um, you know, when 
like look at this boot camp. It's a very small organized boot camp. Um, uh, there's a, just a handful of people that are organizing it. So, you know, we can't be as maybe as respond like we'll be responsive, but not maybe not as responsive as you might expect. So just consider and be thoughtful of the capacity of that. Same thing with your team, right? Uh, if you're working in a small company, uh, you might expect certain resources and certain times at a large organization or maybe at a larger organization. It moves a lot slower than a smaller organization. And you need to um, uh, be thoughtful and aware of of what is actually possible to do or not to do. Um, <laughs> coming on to uh, uphold the universal code, that's our third point. Um, so respect and adhere to the established code of conduct, recognizing its importance in maintaining a unified and efficient. I think that says efficient. I, I read it in my head. I read it differently. Working environment, your own personal code of conduct does not supersede the universal code of conduct. Um, mm. When you work at a company, there is a company culture. That's your universal code or your universal uh, conduct that you need to adhere to. And, uh, you know, trying to give an example of maybe uh, like the boot camp or the previous boot camps, and this is not a nice one, but. Um, one of the major issues I, I had running prior boot camps is um, folks were trying to slide into the DMs of women, trying to treat the platform not just as a learning experience, but also as a dating platform. And, <laughs> you know, if it's something that is not applicable that you would do at work, it's not applicable here, if that makes sense. Um, Chris and Shala? Yeah, um, it's not a dating app. Now there, and this, this is professional as well. Like sometimes when you're working with people or you have someone that you ask questions to all the time, like you might build a rapport with that person and that's fine. But if you're, if you're going to try to go into the dating realm, one that should be something mutually agreed upon where maybe you don't do it on this bootcamp platform first off. But um, just be respectful. It's it's not a dating site. Um, just just be professional. Try to keep it to the realm of the boot camp and asking questions about that is one of my biggest things. I mean, <laughs> this this is this is this is a this is definitely a hot topic. And I was thinking about like if you wouldn't do it at the office, don't do it in here. Um, but but this this is even more so than that because some people might actually date in the office. Mm -hmm. just, just just don't um, don't don't do the work. Everybody's here to learn Terraform. Everybody is here to skill up and and you know get better at their at their professional career. The last thing that we want to do is make it harder for somebody to even feel comfortable coming to the class because somebody else is is uh, trying to chat them up on the back end. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to be very harsh about that. If, if we, if we catch wind of that and somebody's making somebody else feel uncomfortable, they're out of the class period. Uh, and you know, if you're both on Tinder and you both swipe, right, that's a different story. There's a time right. and place for everything, but not, but mostly not, not here. You know what I mean? Another thing is that, you know, people want to make friends and you have to understand uh, boundaries. Some people are very curious because this is a global boot camp. people coming around the world. People are curious about other people's cultures and practices. Uh, you know, be respectful, uh, have boundaries and, you know, you know, don't ask things that uh, might not be uh, appropriate or, you know, some people just don't want the limelight on them. Different cultures. It's not, you know, <laughs> like asking certain questions are not appropriate, even if they, they seem for you. So, you know, just be just be careful. And, you know, in some cases, uh, uh, you know, you might be warned. And if you are warned, take it gracefully and understand that, you know, things are different. Uh, the worst thing you could you could say to us or say to me is like, well, we do it differently here. That's not going to fly mm -hmm. here, okay? Um, if, you, if you are warned and you disagree, you will be outed. Yeah, I mean, or, you'll be kicked out, not not outed, yeah. kicked out. <laughs> and, and I understand that some folks, some folks also, you know, uh, English might not be their first language, but you have to understand. Watch your words, okay? Um, so you know, hopefully that's not too scary for anybody, but I do have to point that out. And uh, you know, we want to make it sure that's a professional space for everybody. Um, I was going to say one more thing. Sorry. Like, if you get ready to write something and in your head you have even the slightest hesitation or pause of, 
I wonder if this is okay. You probably should just not write it. Start yep. there. Yeah. So just you know, if if it if it requires a second thought, then maybe uh, you know maybe just just keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so number four is prioritize self reliance. So first, consult available resources, documentation, FAQs before seeking additional guidance. Read the manual. I know we. It's just the thing is we talked about this a bit earlier, but it's it's one of those things that like it's one of the it probably should have been the first thing on the list because it's such a top top of mind thing. Uh, and you know this. We're going to have another one that's going to feel like a, a repetition here, but um, you know the key here is self-reliance. So you know, the idea is that when you are at a company, there are no tutorials. You know, uh, people cannot be uh, uh, giving you uh, like like uh, connect the dots. And the idea is that the whole point is that, and that's the outcome that I want all you to have in this boot camp, is that you are self-reliant. Right, that you're you're doing that thing on your own, and maybe self reliance is using um, uh, generative AI solutions as a crutch, or or what have you. But you know, maybe this one's more about emphasizing self reliance. So, uh, Chris and Shala, uh, is there any kind of angles we could talk about here about being self reliant as a cloud engineer? Use this bootcamp if you're not working say like your goal is to work in cloud or even it in general professionally and you know you haven't started that yet use this time to get good at being self-reliant as in when you run it up against an issue and maybe you don't know how to fix it or what to do learn how to start doing research to figure that out versus reaching out to someone and saying hey i ran into this how do i fix it and i say that because my experience has always been working professionally is you run up against something and you don't necessarily get to ask a teammate as well as you don't want to always, which I've said before, always go out and ask a teammate because this is how I look at it. If I'm going to keep it like 100 <laughs> real with y'all, we all go to work to earn a paycheck, right? And at the end of the day, your teammate is making their paycheck based off of the work that they're doing, right? And you need to do the same for your own paycheck. So yeah. that if you're getting paid to do a thing and you need to do the thing. And part of that, especially with cloud, is research. You have to do research and figure out how to do stuff. And a lot of times you'll go to a teammate, depending on what the client's asking, your teammates don't know how to do it either. So in the end, you still got to go figure it out yourself. So use this boot camp to get really good at that. It will help you go far. Trust me. Uh, two, two additional points. The best cloud engineers that I know, the best solutions architects and, and what have you, are the ones that have really good Google Foo. They're the ones that can, can figure things out and, and read the documents and parse information. That grokking information, parsing information is a skill set unto itself. And, and becoming and learning how to, and, and it's a fine balance. I mean, you don't want to grind your gears like for hours on end and, and just be stuck on something simple that, that could be easily answered. But you also, you also need to learn how to be uncomfortable with not knowing something and then how to go, f and go forth and get that information. The other point to that is if you are not self-reliant in this course, you're not going to get nearly as much out of it. Um, you're going to get a much better sense of accomplishment if you're not copying and pasting. If you're actually figuring this out and understanding it deeply, and you are self-reliant, and you say, "I did this myself," you're going to you're going to feel a lot better about it at the end. And there's going to be uh, great opportunities for you in this boot camp to uh, get an opportunity to practice self-reliance, uh, because there's going to be code traps. Uh, this is what I did in prior boot camps. Now, because this is a beginner boot camp. I'm not going to make them as hard as previous, previously or prior, but you might use a piece of code that I purposely janked, or um, there is a solution that will have edge cases. So I, you know, and again, I don't want people to spend a lot of time, as Chris was saying, like days and days in the last bootcamp they did. <laughs> but the idea is to have that opportunity to go, okay, I have a problem, and I have to get this to work because sometimes at a company you might be the only cloud engineer or you're the only one on the project. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. you have to deliver cloud level of configurations all over the place. And you might not have the most automatic solution, like the most ideal solution, but in the day it has to work and, uh, and you have to get it to work. 
So, um, you know, hopefully that, that makes sense there. Um, number five is show your effort. And, you know, I know it seems like we're repeating the same thing, but it's from different angles. And this is really important stuff, which is demonstrate initiative and effort in problem solving before reaching out. Um, uh, I, I, you'll hear me say, show proof of effort before you ask a question. And this is more about like, how do you prepare what it is like? So we, we're saying you should go and do your own research and you should go and utilize common resources. So like one was about troubleshooting, like put the effort to troubleshoot. The other one was uh, make sure you're seeking common resources before asking a question. This one is about how do you prepare uh, that information for the other person so that they know you've done the work. Right. So because, you know, um, uh, you know, my dad used to say half the job is telling people are doing the work. The other part is telling people that you did the work. <laughs> and if you want someone to help you, you have to prove that you did all these things because they're going to go down the list and be like, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? You need to have that shown before you even ask a question, if that makes sense. So sorry. Uh, yeah. Chris and Shala. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, if, if somebody comes to me and says, Chris, I spent hours and hours looking up this thing, trying to do the thing. And, and then I say, okay, well, what did you do? Well, I, I Googled it once. I'm going to be like, okay, go, go back and do more stuff. Cause, cause that's, that's not enough. If you have to, as Andrew said, show your effort, make sure that Googling it once and then grinding for hours on that one thing. I mean, there's be resourceful. Uh, all of the, all of these kind of tie together. Yeah. So what comes to mind to me when I need to, when I, cause you learn how to balance when to keep researching and when it's like, you know what, I have a deadline and I'm getting nowhere. I need to go reach out for help. And so when I get to the point where it's like, okay, I, I officially need to go ask someone to help for help. I have screenshots where I'm able to say, uh, hey, I coded this thing right here and I'll highlight something in the code or I'll share the links of where, you know, I found these different articles or high to's, how to's or, you know, official documentation. And I'm, I'm doing these things, but I'm still not getting the re result that I have. And so I'll present that. To, so that way it's like, I didn't just come and just start asking the questions so someone could do the work for me. It's like, I'm trying to figure it out, but I'm not figuring it out, if that makes sense. And uh, a really, really good example um, that I would use from the last boot camp is folks would take screenshots with their phones of their <gasps> computers. What? So, so imagine you're trying, like some, someone needs help and, and, and it's something that's code based. Like, look at my code, look at my error. And they're taking photos with their phone and sending it to you instead of taking it with your screenshot, instead of giving you code blocks so that the other person can debug it. They're not providing you references of where you looked. They're not providing the conditions to uh, which they ran it under and they didn't try <laughs> like other yeah. solutions. People don't want to help you then, right? I'm, because I'm you, didn't, right now. you didn't do the work. And then you're you're saying, hey, can you do my job for me? And and nobody's gonna do that. You gotta be, you gotta do that there. So are oh, you gonna do that right now? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no. But, but I was um, gonna, sorry, I was gonna say that to your point, Andrew, yes, if you are doing something with code, make a code block. I don't care if you save it as a notebook file. Don't just like when it comes to code, try not to just take a screenshot, make it where someone can easily like copy, paste the code and try to help you with it and not sit there and have to type. No one wants to sit there and type out code. <laughs> At least so, I don't. <laughs> so as, as Chris is showing here, like, you know, I don't want to see a screenshot of your <laughs> uh, or like, sorry, I do want to see screenshots. I don't want to see a photo from your phone to, to get help. I understand that some folks like they're used to using this. But when you work in the industry as a as a cloud engineer, you have to be taking lots of screenshots. You need to learn how to take screenshots on your computer. You need to be working from your laptop. There's just some things that we we, we expect. And if mm -hmm. you do that, you're really going to show how green you are. Um, and I'm going to be very strict on this. But in this boot camp, we show you how to do all these things. And they, they're baked into the, the course. Now, how to write good markdown with, with highlight syntaxing. Uh, how to take screenshots on both Mac and Windows. So there's no excuses for these things. Make sure at the bare minimum you do those things. Uh, and yeah, show us proof of work. 
Um, and so we're on to our, our last point here, which is avoid the silo, embrace the collective. So recognize the strength and unified thinking, implement solutions as a team, aligning with projects and team conventions rather than pursuing isolate paths. Seek and uphold shared standards, knowing the, the collaboration yields the most robust and harmonized outcomes. Don't be a hero, be a team <laughs> player. This is a this is a, a huge challenge. And actually, uh, in the last boot camp, it, it affected grading because people had gone such uh, down. Like I, I said, to have some level of creativity so that you can show you are learning on your own, but hmm. some folks just decided to name everything different and put folders everywhere else. Um, even though we had set out a standard for the project, it, like it, so everyone kind of knew where things were. So when you're working on a project, you know, there's probably going to be, um, and if there aren't, you should ask, you know, there's going to be naming conventions or structural conventions, or, uh, you know, maybe there's certain ways uh, like the code or projects need to be organized. Um, and it's not that your solution doesn't work. It's just that you seem to be doing your own thing and expecting everybody else to, to work around you. And even though you might have the most amazing solution, it doesn't work for the team because only you can do it. And, you know, that doesn't really work really well. Uh, I don't know if Shalik, uh, Chris, uh, can you speak to that or? The, the first thing that comes to my mind is the classic, well, it works on my computer. <laughs> like that, that just doesn't work in a project setting, but yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, there's, there's going to be a number of people on the team and, and Shala and I have worked together on, on a number of teams together and everybody brings a, a unique skill set. Everybody's got a different way of, of thinking about things. It's important for everybody to, to Andrew's point, not be a rock star. Um, help, help everybody else on your team learn that thing. If you're, if you're a blazing hot developer and you've got somebody else on your team that's that's good at, at operations but doesn't understand dev that's that's not a detriment that's a that's a skill add that you should leverage with each other um the 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 sysadmin person the operations person they're going to know things about the substructure that you don't understand as a developer you're going to understand things about for each loops that that the that the, the operations person might not know learn from each other and don't say, oh, well, you don't know this. Um, that's, that's the best way to, to ruin a team. And, yeah. You know, sometimes people do bring good changes to the table. <clears throat> Sorry. And, you know, uh, in this boot camp, I might be taking suggestions from boot campers and adjusting things because that's how uh, teamwork, uh, uh, teamwork works. And that's what we did in the last boot camp where it's, um, you know, I set out a, a set out a thing, and then it, it turned out that it was better for everybody to do it another way. Um, and we won't know until enough people go through it and and we decide to change it. But you know, change takes time. Change is gradual. Um, and you know, but don't come here expecting to rewrite everything in a different way and and to get graded and to get any kind of feedback if it's like way out like way out of band or way out of scope in terms of um, you know what is unified thinking for for this project, if that makes sense. And this was 0. 0.6, but it says 0. 0.5. That's totally okay. But yeah, that's that's all the point. And that's another thing is like, you know, things don't have to be perfect. Um, you know, there's going to be definitely some level of flexibility uh, in your work in, in this boot camp. Um, you know, perfection is, is just means that we'll never get things out the door. Um, so, you know, we are aiming, and I'm expecting you to aim for, uh, you know, that 80% and, it good enough is good enough if, if that makes sense right so uh you know folks don't stress out and and over overdo things just try to uh, uh do good enough if that makes sense but anyway yeah i was gonna say as your student advocate this is something i practice myself every day remember self-compassion that is so important um mm. just be self-compassion and what i mean by that is I tend to be a good friend to everyone else but myself. So I am my own worst critic and I am so hard on myself when I'm not on friends. And so I try to practice being my own best friend, like how I do with, you know, my other friends. So, you know, don't beat yourself up, you know. And then sometimes when something's not quite, uh, let's say you're trying to work on something, you're trying to figure it out in the boot camp and it's not just quite 
working out, sometimes you just need to take like that 25 minute break away from it or hour break away from it, go do something else, come back to it. And sometimes you'll think about it differently and then things will click together and it'll start working. So yeah, try not to beat yourself up. Yeah. And so, you know, make sure you take breaks, make sure you eat, make sure you sleep, right? All these things do matter. There's other things outside of this boot camp, uh, and you know, just make sure you come prepared and you take care of yourself because that's really important in order for you to be effective with your team. Say that's 0.7. Um, anyway, hopefully folks have, uh, uh, or, or, or boot camp or students that are watching, um, some of these are going to translate over very well for you. Um, but we will be putting them into practice. Uh, and so if you're wondering why certain videos are here, it's probably because we're trying to reinforce uh, some of these good cloud, cloud engineer expectations. Um, but yeah, we'll all see you in class soon, okay? I'm excited to see everybody on the 16th. Bye. Bye.